Well, I'm delighted to be welcomed to the stage by music that was uh, created during my lifetime. Uh, I used to be accused of being a 19th century man, and I would have to tell people, no, I'm an 18th century guy. Jameis and Campaign and I are here for a delightful reason tonight, and that is to pay honor to the very much still alive M. Stanton Evans. Uh, Stan is... Uh, Stan is known to many as the Toastmaster General of the conservative movement in America. Few people have done as much as he has to marshal wit and put wit and humor to service in the cause of freedom, as has Stan Evans. Some of his uh, wit is absolutely self-deprecating and therefore disarming. Uh, for example, you encounter him early in the morning with a can of Coca-Cola in one hand, a cigarette in the other. He'll look at you and he'll say, you know, my mom always told me, breakfast is the most important meal. <laughs> Or there'll be times when uh, uh, Stan, putting the, uh, taking the fight to the other side, will draw the wit of some of the, the great wits of, uh, of uh, civilization, uh, like Ambrose Bierce or H.L. Mencken, and he'll say, you know, the problem with the people who push the nanny state on us is that they really are Puritans. They are haunted by the awful, ugly feeling that somewhere, somebody is happy. <laughs> it's hard to, today to remember that the modern conservative American movement, the modern American conservative movement, the libertarian movement, the whole allied field, really began as a youth crusade led by people like William F. Buckley Jr. at the time of God and Man at Yale. Stan Evans was one of those kids who was there physically present at Sharon, Sharon, Connecticut, the meeting called by Bill Buckley when the, the Sharon statement, one of the finest statements of modern conservative belief, was written. But he was more than just there. He was the scrivener. Stan had a pen, an acid pen, a brilliant pen. He was the scrivener of the Sharon statement, and, uh, and he is... Uh, an author of considerable weight, frankly, not just a great wit, but an author, a thinker of considerable weight. Uh, two important books uh, that Stan leaves to us, will leave to us as part of his bequest, is a book called The Theme is Freedom, reconciling the serious consideration of the history of the civilization of the West, including the Judeo-Christian traditions that are so elemental to it, with the idea, the animating idea of freedom, of human liberty, that is the defining line that courses through human history. Uh, he's also done serious uh, scholarly work on modern history, blacklisted by history, his work on, on, uh, on Joe McCarthy, digging painstakingly into the records made available by the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russian, Communist, KGB, Ministry of Defense, and other records. It turns out that McCarthy was right all along. There really were a bunch of Soviet spies working in the government of the United States, which brings to mind another great witticism of Stan Evans, who, who used to say, who I suspect still, still says, you know, I, I have a hard time with the goals of Joe McCarthy, but you really have to admire the man's methods. <laughs> Stan, Stan is an apostle of the view that you can view things on a spectrum of, of civilization versus barbarism. If an event happens in history, in our lifetime, in the news, a traditionalist might ask, what does it mean in the war of civilization against barbarism? You can also view things on the, on the spectrum of liberty. A libertarian might ask, on a, on a matter of history or a matter in the news, what does it mean in the fight for liberty against tyranny? One of Stan's great gifts to us, besides his wit, is the insight that those two spectra are not mutually inconsistent. As a matter of fact, they overlay importantly Liberty is an organic outgrowth of human history. The fight for liberty is the fight for civilization. The fight against barbarism is the fight against tyranny. And we need to see, we need to see those fights as partners. The fight for the tradition of the West and the fight for the freedom of the individual are the same fight. That has been the lifelong fight of Stan Evans and Heartland Institute and all of us are proud to pay tribute to Stan tonight. Jameson. Thank you, Joe. Uh, some of you may remember the great conservative political scientist, Wilmore Kendall, who was also an editor of National Review, 
Back when Walmart was about eight years old, uh, or uh, probably about 12 years old, he used to drive his father, who was blind, uh, and was a minister to various churches in the, on the circuit in Oklahoma, driving dusty roads every Sunday morning. And one Sunday, uh, his father was booked to speak at the State and Saint Asylum. Uh, he began his sermon, as he usually did, with a booming voice saying, why are we all here? And from the back of the room, a voice croaked, because we're not all there. <laughs> Stan Evans, our honorary the man we're honoring tonight, has always been there. With his scholarly political writings, uh, the book Joe mentioned, uh, which every one of you should have, The Theme is Freedom, and seven other books. Uh, his frequent writings and teachings for the Intercollegiate Studies Institute, and decades and decades of, of the creation of, of a cadre of conservative scholars many of whom became professors, authors, and quite a few federal judges appointed by Ronald Reagan. His writings in uh, Human Events and National Review were widely read by most of us in the 60s and 70s. His editorials for the afternoon paper, the Indianapolis News, together with my father's uh, morning paper, the Star, made uh, Indianapolis, uh, he once quipped, the only city in America with stereophonic reaction. <laughs> <clears throat> he often drove the uh, Indiana State Legislature into a, in a, a, a real frenzy. But he was also <clears throat> a leading political activist. Uh, two examples of which were his role in the founding of Young Americans for Freedom. Joe mentioned the writing of this Sharon Statement, but you know, if there had not been a YAF founded in 1960, in 1980, there would not have been 100,000, 200,000, 40 year olds that were able to take, do the, do the scut work of the Reagan campaign in the states and eventually help make his actual administration a success. Uh, Joe's former employer, uh, Don Devine, ran the entire civil service, for example. Uh, Don was an early uh, YAF board member. Uh, second, a little known fact, uh, but a very important one was Stan's critical role, uh, which kept, helped keep the conservative movement alive in the 1960s and 70s. With uh, ACU, when he became chairman in the early 70s, uh, ACU founded organizations like the American Legislative Exchange Council, National Journalism Center, and there are quite a few fellows uh, here in the, in the room tonight who were involved with the uh, Illinois Conservative Union back when Don Totten and, and others were uh, our warriors down in Springfield. The most important thing I think Stan did as an activist was his role, which again, few people know about, uh, in saving nearly single-handedly the 1976 primary campaign of Ronald Reagan. The Reagan campaign, you may remember, at least the older people here might, really got off to a bad start in 1976. Uh, we lost a whole bunch of primaries in a row, and the campaign was literally out of money. And when the North Carolina primary came up, came up uh, the Reagan campaign was closing its doors. I mean, they were literally shutting down the campaign. They sent no one to North Carolina. But Stan went and uh, took the treasury of the ACU and some ACU staff people, and he worked with Senator Helms and Tom Ellis in North Carolina and put you know, a really first-class team of political people into the state. Reagan won North Carolina and then proceeded to win his home state of Indiana, his native state of Texas, and many others. And by the time the 1976 convention had come around, uh, Reagan was almost even with, with uh, Gerald Ford, the incumbent vice president. Stan lost, uh, Reagan lost the uh, convention, but the key thing is that if it had not been for Evans and Helms and Tom Ellis in North Carolina, after 1976, Ronald Reagan would have been remembered as a distant memory of a somewhat successful governor of California and not the national Republican that that campaign made him become. So in other words, uh, without Stan Evans, it's quite likely there would have been no Ronald Reagan in 1980 and all that followed. 
Uh, let us all toast Stan Evans, our happy warrior who was always there. Thank you. Well done, Jim. Thank you. <clears throat> now we're going to do a brief video uh, slideshow right now.